Hi, the Mud Broker here. You were probably expecting Heather, weren't you? Well, until Heather gets back on her feet, some of us content creators here on YouTube are giving her a little help by making videos so that she can keep her channel going and relevant to the YouTube algorithm. Hopefully you'll enjoy my little presentation. Today, I'm going to make some extra crispy breadsticks. It's a little bit different of a recipe than most bread recipes. This is actually a recipe I figured out trying to make a homemade version of Little Caesar's cheese bread. The secret to it is cake flour. Now the difference between cake flour, all-purpose flour, and bread flour is the gluten level. Bread flour has the most gluten. It lets it trap the air bubbles, so carbon dioxide bubbles from the yeast, and it gives it a lot more body and structure, and it makes for a stretchier dough. All-purpose flour is in the middle, and cake flour has the lowest amount of gluten in it. That way your cake, rather than having a bread-like consistency, is more like a cake. It'll hold a little bit of, a, of a carbon dioxide and bubbles as the cake rises, but it won't give it that bread-like structure and crumb to it. So anyway, I'm going to start off by proofing my yeast. I always proof my yeast because that way I can tell if my yeast is still good for one thing and it gives the yeast a little bit of a head start on the whole process. To do this I'll want about a half a tablespoon of sugar. Put that in there. About a teaspoon and a half of yeast. A teaspoon and a half, two teaspoons. You don't have to be super duper precise about it. And I want one cup, where did my measuring cup and spoon go? And I want one cup of warm water. This is about 110 degrees, 100, 105 maybe, we'll see what it actually is, make sure it hasn't cooled off too much. For making bread, you want your water a little bit more than body temperature. About 100 to 110 degrees works good. And we're a little over 100, so we're okay. Give her one cup of water. Stir it around so that the yeast and the sugar get all nice and dissolved. And then I'm going to let this sit for five minutes. And I'll show you what it looks like when it gets back. But it should be nice and bubbly and foamy. I'll see you in a couple of minutes when this is ready to have the dry ingredients added. It's been five minutes and my yeast has proofed. You can see there's a nice layer of foam on top of that. Hopefully the light will get there. And it's ready to add the dry ingredients. What I have in my container here is a cup and a half of all-purpose flour, one cup of cake flour, and a teaspoon of salt. Before I do that though, I almost forgot, I need to add two tablespoons of olive oil. There's one, and there's the other. Anyhow, like I said, there's my dry ingredients, and I also have about a half a cup extra of flour in case I need it to get this to the right consistency. It's hard to be really precise when you start off with your dough because flour absorbs moisture from the air and it'll vary just about every time you make bread exactly how much water and flour you need. So we'll get this started and see how it does. I'm going to mix this until it comes together as a ball move this a little bit closer until it comes together as a ball and if I need to I'll add a little bit more flour. Okay this has come together and I don't need to add any more flour. I can tell because it comes clean off the sides of the bowl. If it leaves a lot of wet dough stuck to the side of the bowl you need a little bit more, fl a little bit more flour. But this looks like it's pretty good. A little bit of residue isn't going to hurt but you can tell if it's really wet and sticky. But since this is good to go, I'm going to let this knead for five minutes and I will be back when it's done kneading. We're almost done kneading 
and I'm going to have to work fast. This is a very soft, sticky doll, and if I let it sit, it's going to want to sit, stick back down to the inside of my mixing bowl. So what you do, get a little bit of oil on your hands, rub them around, unlock the head, turn it off, and pick it up right away. And I still got a little bit stuck there, but if you get a little stuck, it's not the end of the world. Anyway, you get this out, knead it a little bit, get my dough hook off and out of the way. And, get that little bit there that's stuck. Like I said, if you get a little stuck to the inside, it ain't the end of the world. It can just make things a little bit more difficult than they really need to be. Pour oh, a couple of teaspoons, half a tablespoon of oil inside your mixing bowl. Slosh it around a little bit. Get in there. Rub it up the sides. Make this into a nice ball and we drop it in. Wipe it around in the oil a little bit. Flip it over. Get oil all the way around. And I like to kind of rattle it around in there just to smear the oil around the sides a bit more. Now we're just going to cover this up and let it rise for 45 minutes to an hour till it at least doubles in size. A little bit more doesn't hurt. Let me wipe my hands off. You can cover this with a damp towel or some plastic wrap which will work just fine. And I'll be back once this is risen and we can get on with our next step. My dough has risen nicely as you can see and we're ready to start making breadsticks. Now most folks aren't going to have one of these. This is a cast iron breadstick pan. I'm not 100% certain but I'm pretty sure that was made by Lodge in the 1930s and 1940s. If you don't have one of these, you can cut your dough into pieces and you can uh, roll it out into little breadsticks and put them in the bottom of a cast iron skillet that you boiled up good or you can lay them out onto a sheet of parchment paper on a baking sheet. I'm going to get these here all oiled up good probably have to dump off some excess. I got way more than I need in a couple of them. And I'm also going to get a little bit of oil on my rolling pin here. You don't need a rolling pin if you uh, use a skillet or baking sheet. Okay, got that ready. We're still on camera. I'm going to punch this down. Got a little bit of oil on my hands. I'm going to punch this down, take it out. Roll her into a ball. I'm going to stretch it out so it's about the size and shape of my breadstick pan. Like I said before, this is a very soft, fairly sticky dough. A bit stuck there. Get it pulled out. Now, I just hit it with a rolling pin and that'll cut them. And I can see that I'm short in some of these. But that's okay, I got a little bit of extra on the edges. I can just take that and pack it in where I need it to be. And get these all nice and organized. not going as pretty as I hope, but it is going. Steal a little bit from this guy for here. And we're looking pretty much all right. Steal a little bit for this one. Now, I'm going to cover this up with a piece of plastic and I'm going to let it rise for about 15 minutes. They don't need to double again. 
but they just want to, you want to get them to where they've obviously risen a bit. Usually about 15 minutes, give or take. And I will be back when we're ready to go on to the next step. My breadsticks have risen up quite nicely, and now I'm going to brush them with a little bit of olive oil. Milo, don't bug me. My dog wants out, but he just came back in. And if I let him out, he'll just sit out in the porch and bark at the cats. And I don't need that right now. Anyway, brush these with a little bit of olive oil. And then, I'm going to sprinkle them. Hopefully I got enough oil there. I'm going to sprinkle them with some Parmesan, grated Parmesan cheese. That's been mixed up with a little bit of garlic powder. You don't need a whole lot. I got a good bit more than I need here. You kind of adjust it to taste, depending on how much garlic you want in there. I got it mixed up pretty stout. About three tablespoons of grated Parmesan, maybe a half a teaspoon, teaspoon of garlic powder. We usually do it pretty good. Give them a good coating. Now, if you're going to do these on a baking pan with parchment paper, you can skip the next step. But if you're going to do this in cast iron, you're really going to need to warm up the pan before you put it in the oven. I've got my oven preheated at 400 degrees. I'm going to set this on the burner over medium-ish heat. Here's my rear burner. And so the, since this is a bit bigger than the burner, I'll have to move it back and forth a few times to warm it up evenly. You don't want to really fry these, but you do want to get your pan good and hot before you put it in the stove, or in the oven rather. Don't start my lull. Anyway, you want to get it uh, warmed up good before you put it in the oven. Like I said before, this isn't quite frying hot, but I don't know if you can see it on camera. It is starting to get a few little bubbles and a few little wisps of steam and just lightly touching that the pan is good and hot. So I'm now ready to put this in a 400 degree oven for about 20 to 25 minutes. These baked for 25 minutes and they've been cooling for about 5 and they should pop right out of there. Oh yeah, they're coming out good. A common mistake when making bread in any sort of a pan is try and take it out of the pan too soon. If you let it sit for five or six minutes after you take it out of the oven before you try and dump it out of the pan, it'll give the bread a little time to cool and shrink. There's steam built up inside the bread from the baking and giving it a little time for that to release will let the bread shrink up a bit and it will come out of the pan a lot easier. Let's see what we got for breadsticks. Yeah, the bottom crisped up and nice, and you can hear how crispy that is. The reason why I use bread flour in this is because I tried making, like I said earlier, Little Caesars cheese bread, and most of the recipes, the bottom would get done and brown up nice, but instead of having that light, airy crispiness to it, it would just get hard. And by using the bread flour and the all-purpose flour, the gluten isn't as strong and you get a much crispier, airier sort of bottom to it. Now when you break into these, these are still piping hot, it'll have a very light, airy crumb inside, very fluffy, and it should have a nice crispy, crunchy outside. And it very much does. Now like I said, not everybody has a cast iron breadstick pan, but if you come across one that they don't want an arm and a leg for, I highly recommend them. They're really handy for things like this. And uh, you don't need one to make breadsticks. You can roll them out and do them on a baking sheet or in a cast iron skillet. Just remember to heat up the cast iron before you put it in the oven. If you're making cornbread or corn sticks, usually you heat the cast iron up first and then dump your batter in, but you can't really do that with a dough like this. But you can heat it up after you have the dough in the pan. So that's it for my video. Hopefully you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.